Them Farrell brothers said quarter to three. I'm wondering if we're early or late. Ah, uh, we're late. The bank's closed. Won't be able to get that cashier's check today. Well, now you worry about the unimportant stuff. I'm just wondering how long it'll take us to get across the street to that saloon. Stop worrying about the saloon. That'll be open till midnight or later. Yeah, but Joe, on a hot day like this, they might run out of cold beer. Hey, Mike. Josh, how you doing? Joe. Dude, how are you? Sorry we're late. Hey, uh, we weren't waiting. We just got here, but the bank's already closed. Well, we're not gonna let that stand beat us, are we? We got the money for the herd right here. Well, what good's the money gonna do us? We got no bank. You wanna turn it into a cashier's check, so let's go get one. Just like that, huh? Why not? I've done enough business with this bank to rate a couple of favors. This is Mike Farrell. Open up. Sorry, the bank's closed. I'm Mike Farrell. This is Joe Cartwright. He wants to trade $15,000 for a cashier's check. He's in a hurry, and so am I, so open this door. You must be new. I've never seen you before. Well, not exactly new. I've been here a month. But I do know you. Uh, I wouldn't have opened the door except that Mr. Moore, our president, pointed you out on the street yesterday. Good. Let's get on with it. Uh, it's uh, highly irregular. I'm not uh, I'm not sure Mr. Moore would approve. He'll approve, or I'll take my business elsewhere. Besides, there's nothing irregular about a cash deal. Money right here. Well, I guess it'll be all right. $15,120, and please make out a cashier's check to Joe Cartwright. Well, my tally makes you hurt. It hit over 1000 Joe. Yeah, we would have been 10 over. We lost two crossing the creek. Well, most herds are a few heads short. Pleasure to pay for the extra steers. Pleasure to take the extra money. You, uh, you got a receipt book around here somewhere? Uh, yes, sir. I had it around here the other day. Oh, there it is, sir. Thank you. Joe, the next time you're up in the Arizona Territory, you stop in and see us. Here? Just ask anybody where the Acabo is, and they'll tell you where to find it. All right, I'll do it. Yeah, it's a great spread, the Acabo. Good hunting, man. Come and plan to spend a week. I'd love to if my pa ever gives me a week off. <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> here, here you are, Mr. Scott, right? All right, thank you. Here's yours, sir. Thank you. Hey, listen, thank you very much. Sorry we kept you so late. Keep much of a watch around there. Anybody can walk right in. I saw you coming. Well, everything went like we planned it. Not quite. What happened to that cashier? Oh. <sighs> you hit him too hard. I only tapped him. I swear he had a head made of eggshells. Where's the money? Well, let's get something straight first. There's a rope in this now. The price has gone up. I want a bigger cut. How much? Down the middle, half. Whew. Tell you what. You make it a third, and I won't give you an argument. And you can count out your share right here and now. 
No tricks? I'm your friend, remember? I found you and your wife down in Mexico. No money, no food, holes in your boots, and wanted by the law. And I've been taking very good care of you ever since. Sure you have. Because you needed a man who knew banks. We needed each other. Now get the money and count it out. Jackson, how many banks have you peeled to get money to invest in high living and uh, racehorses that stop to graze? Two, three? What's the difference? No difference. It's just that you're going to ride back to get Lisa and head right for the border again. And that's a mistake. Because you're going to wind up broke and hungry just like you did before. Now you're really better off at the ranch. And Lisa loves it there. She'll like Mexico City much better. Green paper's gonna put us right back on top again. Some of those blankets on the bed and wrap them up good. Put them on his horse and dump them in the rocks in one of the canyons on the way south of here. What do we do with his horse? Turn him loose, first Indian sign we see. They'll steal him. I wouldn't have thought of that. That's the difference between you and me. Calamitous, I know. But there's so much money involved, I wanted to come and tell you about it personally. I've been sick, truly sick about this. Well, now, look, my, my $15,000 was given to a teller in your bank. Now, dude saw it, and so did the Farrell brothers. I'm sure they did, but unfortunately, the man who took your money and made out that check was an imposter. Now, this bears a genuine signature of our cashier. If you compare it with the one on the forgery... Yeah, they're completely different, all right. So how do I get my money? I'm deeply sorry, but we can't honor a forged check. Wait a minute. You've got a sheriff in Dryer Wells. What's he doing about this? Trying to find the imposter. Without success up until the time I left. Well, we suffered a loss, too. Our cashier was clubbed over the head and died later. Well, it's my turn to say I'm sorry. I'm going to keep these. I might need them. Dude, settle the horses. Where are you going? After the money. Well, I'm going with you. Oh, no, you're not. Well, I left you in charge of the ranch while he's in San Francisco. It was my job to deliver and sell those cattle. I lost the 15000 I'll get it back. How about if I go along? I've never been to Dry Wells. Well, now's your chance. We'll be back as soon as we can, brother. Okay, dog, brother. How about these candy? Or you might as well stick around for supper. Well, thank you. That's very nice. Yes, Mr. Farrell. Did the mail come? No, but I'd like to talk to you anyway. In the house, out of the sun, where it's cool. I don't mind the sun. I do. I'm buying for rations, huh? Good. How's the kitchen help treating you? Just fine, thank you, Mr. Farrell. Oh, you're way too formal. 
Let's make it Mike and Lisa, shall we? Pedro! Get in here! Pedro! Scraps! Throw them out! And if you ever give Senora Jackson anything like that again, I'll slice off your ears and roast them and throw them to the dogs. It's not his fault. He gave me what I asked for. You put steaks in there. Thick, juicy, tender steaks. I want corn. I want potatoes. I want fresh bread and fresh butter. Si, patron. And two of the best bottles of wine I've got. Bueno. You've got to yell at them or they don't do anything. Speaking of wine, what's your pleasure? Nothing, thank you. Lisa, it's not right for you to be living out there in that adobe shack doing all your own work. I let you do it. Because it's what your husband wanted. It was wrong when he was here, and it's worse now. To better days. Lisa, in this part of the world, the quality lives in the big house. The hacienda. Shacks are for servants. This place is full of spare rooms. Pick anyone you want. Anyone. No, Mr. Farrell, I'm afraid my husband would never approve. Kelly! Open up the gate! Hey, Lisa? To what do we owe the honor of this visit? I heard your horse. I hoped it was my husband riding in. Has my brother been bothering you? He is persistent. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Made a quick trip. Maybe even a little quicker than you expected. $2,500. Last of the cart right heard. Quartermaster Fort James satisfied? Why shouldn't he be? There's no better beef than Cartwright beef. There'll be none better than Farrell beef. Now that we got the money to operate the way we should. A little trick at the bank with dry wells, we'd have put us right back on top again. We haven't heard the last of that. Don't you think I know that? All I bought was time. Time to get rid of the herd. Cartwrights will be coming over the mountain. And their boots, I do the same thing. When they get here, what then? What can they prove? We bought a herd and we paid cash for it. We don't know any more about what happened after that than they do. Oh, you're not going to believe that. We're going to have to fight them. All right. We'll fight. We've got the men. What do you mean we got the men? we got three guns we can depend on. Mine, yours, and Kelly's. We'll hire more. There's something else on your mind. Let's have it. Yeah. Something else. I know that that thing in Dry Wells was just an excuse to get the Jacksons out of Mexico. I watched you work for a lot of years, Mike. Abner Jackson didn't know it, but he was dead from the minute you saw Lisa. You want Lisa, but she doesn't want you, and that's the way it's going to be. Don't you mouth off at me, boy. You're talking to the man. Changed your pants, cleaned your messes, wiped your nose, and paid your bills ever since you were paid born. my bills. You were the one that couldn't cut loose from the poker tables till you were in so deep we had to mortgage the ranch. My ranch. I built it. Our ranch. Pa left it to both of us. Get out of here. How many fights we had, Mike? hundred? Two hundred? And you won them all, except the last one. I could have broken you over my knee if I wanted to. Not then or now, and don't ever try. Stay away from Lisa. Stay clear away, or we're going to tangle. And that'll be the second and last fight you'll lose. <laughs> No, 
Billy Blake was right in here under this table all the time you and the Farrells was in the bank. Well, Billy was getting on. He, uh, he didn't see too good, didn't hear too good. I guess that's how come somebody could hide in here until he pulled the blinds and locked the door. Uh, no suspects, huh? We didn't even know what the man looked like till we got through a telegraph. But we tried anyway, as hard as we know how. You see, Billy was a cousin of my wife's. Four days before she let me stay in the house long enough to eat a meal. Well, there's nothing more to see in here. Aside from my 15000 did the bank lose any money? No, the vault was locked. You know, Mr. Cartwright, the description of that cashier you sent, it, well, it seems to fit a man who was around here for two or three days before the bank was robbed. He's plum gone since. This whole thing was well planned. Yeah, had to. Bank was closed, vault was locked. That fake cashier didn't stand to make a cent unless he knew that you and the Farrells and the money was going to walk into this bank. Yeah. You think he pulled it off alone? I don't know. We're not going to know until we catch him. You just want to walk down to jail with me. I got some coffee. Sounds good. Boys, well, it ain't fresh, but... I found him hid under some rocks in a stud canyon off Apache Flats. Got one bullet through the heart. It's the phony cashier. I found this in one of his pockets, and that's all I found on him. You know her? Nobody I ever saw. I've seen everybody around here within two days' ride. Well, in my opinion, we just slammed into the end of the box canyon. Take him down to docks. That dead man ain't gonna help us none. Looks to me like he wasn't in this alone. There's only two other people who knew we were bringing $15,000 to that bank. The Farrell brothers. They did kind of open that bank easy like, didn't they? What do you know about them, Sheriff? No, oh, not very much. Except that they're long gone into Arizona territory by now. Cattle sold, the money stashed, and out of my reach. Who's the law down there? Well, there's a territorial marshal rides by the Acabo about once every six months. Outside of that, I... Farrell's are pretty much about all the law there is. Mind if I keep this? Nope. Let's go see the Farrell brothers. From what I hear, they got a real fort down there. They hire a lot of border gun hands. You'd do a sight better sticking your head in a rattler's nest. Yeah, maybe so, but there's no other way to get to them. Come on, let's ride. Just how far is this Farrell Ranch? Oh, I figure the Cabo ought to be about another day's ride. The Cabo. You know, that's a name I've been hearing ever since I was a kid. Uh, Cabo, it's Spanish. It means I finish. Yeah, well, I hope it isn't our finish. Well, you're full of witty sands and optimism. That's what I like about you, dude. By the way, uh, how are we going to get into the feral place? I'm going to ride up and ride in. Oh, yeah, just like three fat little quail flying straight into the barrels of a shotgun. Straightforward. That's you, Joe. Not me. I'm a little more, uh... Sneaky. But devious is a word I had in mind, but sneaky will do fine. I read a story once. It's about a big fort. There were some soldiers trying to get in. So they built a big wooden horse. And they took it up to the gate and left it. Yeah, it's a Trojan horse, so on. Trojan horse, yeah. You get past bays and duns and I'm lost. The people opened the gate and dragged the horse inside. There were men inside the horse. When the soldiers got back, they had the gate open and the battle half won. Now, it occurs to me... The two of us would be a lot better off if one of us was inside the fort when the other two rode up. Are you volunteering? Well, there's got to be somebody the Farrells don't know. It seems to come down to me. 
and you are sneaky. You know, if the fighting starts, it'll be uh, you and me that's getting shot at, Joe. And I'll be the one man who ain't shooting at you. He thinks of everything, don't he? Yeah, well, how do you figure on getting inside? I think I'll get me some boards and build me a horse. That's what you think, mister. You don't get in here until you tell me what you want. What's going on out there? Some saddle tramp wants to see the boss. Well, boss. All right, open the gate, let him in. All right, you're in. Now, what do you want? Work. I'm a top hand. You any good with that gun? Try me. Find out. Well, he comes right at you, doesn't he? I like that. And we can use another hand. Can't use you, mister. Kelly, get him out of here. You heard the man. Move! Hurry up! Out! Take him, Kelly. Tell your hired hand to get out of that gun belt without touching the gun. Do what he says, Kelly. It's the kind of man you hire. He looks like a short measure of nothing to me. You want to get out of those gun belts, I'll show you. That won't be necessary, I guarantee. No gun play. He took our best hand apart without even working up a sweat. We need him. Maybe. Where are you from? Different places. What places? Virginia City, Gold Hill, Carson, Tonopah, Dry Wells, all over. All right. I want $10 more a month than he's getting. You're worth it. You're hired, friend. Thank you kindly. I'm 
This is Lisa Jackson. Something I do for you? I heard you say you were from the north. Dry wells. Yeah, that's one of the places I stopped at, yeah. My husband is up there. On business. I wondered if you might have seen him. Jackson? No, I don't think I met anybody with that name. He's dark. Curly hair, hazel eyes, mustache. Well. Lisa? I see you've met her new hand. We were just talking about dry wells. She was asking me about her husband. Ma'am, I'm sorry. I didn't meet anybody with that name. But I was just in there long enough to say howdy and goodbye. Yes. Well, thanks anyway. Right. Pretty woman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You came in from up Reno way. Mm -hmm. How long were you on the trail? Three, four weeks. You moved right along, huh? I don't stay where I don't like what I see. No offense. I wasn't trying to pry. It's just that outside news is scarcer around here than dancing girls. And I thought something might have happened along the way. No, nothing. Well, there was a bank robbery in Dry Wells. Uh, something different about it. I never did get the straight of that. I guess you know there's more to your job than discarding that gate. Gun hand pay, there usually is. Well, Mrs. Jackson is the worrying kind. That robbery had nothing to do with her husband. No point in telling her about it. I wasn't planning to. Good. But she lives in an adobe out back. And she asked me to see nobody bothers her while her husband's gone. If I'm not around, that's part of your job. Mm -hmm. Keep everybody away from there, including my brother. Well, that might not sit too good, a hired hand chasing the boss. The boss? I hired you. I didn't say anything about chasing. You just walk up and stand there till he leaves. Kelly! Over here. If Mike wants to know why you're there, just tell him to ask me. All right, we'll do. All right, take over here. Candy's gonna get something to eat. That's what I was going to do. Look, you've already hit the kitchen twice. It's time Candy's first. Digging right in, ain't you? Making yourself a home? I'm doing what I'm told, just like you. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you something. You're shining up to the wrong fella. Josh is just a pup. Mike runs this spread. And something else. You and me, we ain't through yet. We got one to go. Well, you try it. You might get yourself a raise. <laughs> when I'm ready. And you may as well give that saddle of yours away, because you sure ain't going to be needing it. Nice evening, Lisa. Pleasant out here, isn't it? Yes, it is, Mr. Farrell. Still Mr. Farrell, huh? Lisa, I I don't want to hurt you, but I've I've got to tell you the truth. I I don't think you're ever going to see your husband again. On on, on that ride up north, why? He talked about, he talked about California and a, and a fresh start. I didn't mention it before because, well, I just, I just couldn't find the right words. But Lisa, he's, he's not coming back. He just, just rode on west. I don't believe you. Wait, I know how hard it is to accept because of the way you feel about him, but it's true. I even lied about the mail for the same reason. The mail from the north comes twice a week, not once every two weeks, like I said. I've had four letters from Drywell since we got back. Good night, Mr. Farrell. Wait, Lisa. 
There's something else. You don't have to worry. Because I'm going to see to it that you don't want for anything ever. Not for the rest of your life. And I'll be proud to do it, Lisa. I don't want anything from you, Mr. Farrell. All right. I spoke too soon. Think about it, Lisa. I'd break my back to make you happy. Miss Jackson? Fresh water. Who told you to fetch anything? I asked him to, Mr. Farrell. Thank you very much, Candy. Mm -hmm. Take a lot on yourself, boy. After this... After I... this! Candy will do Lisa's chores. She likes it better that way. And so do I. I got a tramp in there all dusty and sweating. I guess it's time old bone bag and me did our little trick. Oh, son. This rock don't have to be big enough to hurt him. Come on, son. Just so he knows it's there. Hey, now look at that. Convince anybody. I trained him myself. Because when that weather turns nasty, there's no better excuse for toasting your feet on someone's bunkhouse stove than a horse that comes up all uh, cripple-like, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I seem to remember the first time you came to our ranch. Well, I've done it again, bone bag. I swear I'm going to have to have my mouth sewed shut. Another mile of dusty road and tight boots, and I bet he's going to make me walk every step of the way. Dude, you can count on it. Fred, how about opening up? Let us in, huh? Tell you tell me who you are and what you want. Well, now, are you going to stand there spouting questions? Will a couple pilgrims die of thirst? Who is it? It's Joe Cartwright. Open the gate and let him in. Josh, look who's here. Joe, how are you? Hi, Mike. Hey, you remember, Good. dude, don't yeah, you? Yeah, you bet, right. dude. Come right in. You got a lame horse. Yeah. Where'd you made it? Barely. Joe, uh, this is Candy, one of my men. Uh, he'll take care of your horses for you. Honey. Candy? Mm-hmm. Come on, you gotta be kidding. Nobody's gonna name my Candy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in the house. I got something to cut the dust out of your throat. Take that my sounds horse, good. Candy. Yeah, Joe, the Acaba's a great little spread. Of course, it's pistolero country down here, you know. Border gangs strike without warning. Steal everything but your bones. That's why the fences and the guards outside. Gotta be very careful in the hills, but the hunting's great. I bragged Cartwright right about our hunting, brother Josh. Now it looks like we've got to prove it. Gentlemen, here's to a strong drink, a hot bath, and a soft bed. Just for the man needs after a long ride. Joe, dude. Mike, the, uh, the hospitality is great, but this isn't a pleasure trip. Oh? Well, I don't understand. Yeah, well, that $15,000 cashier's check I got at the bank, that's a forgery. It's no good. The bank won't honor it. A forgery? But how could that be? We, we both stood there and watched him make it out. Yeah, but the man was an imposter. A real cashier was hit on the head. Died before he regained consciousness. Well, I don't believe it. Josh? you say it's true, it's true, but I... I can't see how... I didn't know that man. He said I'd been pointed out to him. I'd never seen him before. 
That's why he let us in the door. I, I'd love to help you, Joe, but you saw and heard what I saw and heard. Josh, can you add anything to that? No, except uh, another drink might ease the pain a little. Yeah, it's a good idea. Joe, I, I don't know what to say. I thought I made a clean deal. Bought a herd, paid cash, and got a receipt. And I bought a phony $15,000 cashier's check. Well, you don't expect me to pay for the herd twice, do you, Joe? No, I don't expect you to pay twice. I, uh, I just thought you might be able to help me find him. Well, I told you I've, I've never seen him before. Yeah, that's right. You told me, didn't you? Why? There must be somebody in Dry Wells knows that man. If it was me, I'd, I'd talk to every man, woman, and kid in that town. We already have. No luck. Well, it's, uh, it's going to be two or three days before dude's horse is ready to travel. I hope that invitation to be your house guest still holds. Sure, sure it does. If dude wants to make a swap way, he can have his choice of our stock. No, thanks. Me and old Bonebag been through a lot together. I'll keep him. Speaking of old Bonebags, we better check on him. Thanks for the drink. We'll see you around. Huh? Right. Right. How's the leg? Good, good. Did you do any good? This is what I expected, nothing. This woman out back, waiting for her husband to come back from dry wells. He's long overdue. Her picture's in that locket you're carrying. Uh, how long do you think it'll take to heal? Well, I don't know. Two or three days, anyway. Go out past the bunkhouse circle, come in the back. I'll cover. Some box stalls in the barn. I'll get some medicine for this leg. All right, thank you very much. On our wedding day, he said he'd carry this as long as he lived. I knew he was dead. I wouldn't believe it. But I knew. We were very close. Even when we had to be apart. He was with me. Inside. A gentle, glowing warmth. Always there. One night, I woke up. Suddenly, cold and empty and alone. There was nothing there. Nothing at all. And I knew. He made mistakes. I got into trouble trying to get money to buy me the things he thought I wanted. And all I ever wanted was him. Miss Jackson's woodpile was down to nothing. Uh, your brother asked me to rack up enough for a week or two. My husband was working for them. He stole your money for them. And they killed him. And they're going to pay for it, Mrs. Jackson, right now. Mr. Cartwright, I believe I can help you. I think you better stay out of it. Oh, don't worry about me. I'm already dead. I died with my husband. Hell, 
it took you long enough. Wait a minute. Stay here and watch the gate till I tell you different. You want me to do what? I want you to open your safe so I can have a look inside. You think your money's in there? Yeah. Yeah, I think you planned this whole thing right from the start. There's money in there, but it's my money. And that doesn't mean we had anything to do with the robbery. The cashier spilled some ink on some of that money. I think it's in your safe. <laughs> this is the first time I've ever been called a thief. This is, uh, this is De La Frontera Brandy. From Spain. Last bottle in the territory. Why don't we open it up, have a drink, and start all over again? I think we ought to open the safe. Well, if you put it that way. Fuck shot load. Go ahead and try it. No guts. You could have bluffed him. Too late for bluffing. It is now. What are we going to do? Royo Seiko. Time they find him, it'll look like a couple of fools got caught in a flash flood. And what about me, Mr. Farrell? Now that I know all about it, are you going to drop me off a cliff, too? He's not going to do anything to you, Lisa. I won't let him. You'd try, Josh. But you couldn't stop him. I can stop him. Did you try at Dry Wells? Mr. Cartwright and I had a long talk. He told me what happened at Dry Wells. He even brought me this. You killed my husband. That's right. And I'm sorry you found out about that. Because now you're going to have to go along with Joe and Dude. Oh, no, you don't. You stay out of this. I told you to stay away from Lisa or we tangle. And I told you you're talking to the man. Your money, sure enough. Yeah, fifteen thousand dollars, Evan. Give the rest of it to Sheriff and Dry Wells, along with Candy's friend. They can turn it over to the U.S. Marshal. When you are ready, senores. 
The horses wait. Right away, amigo. You know something? What? I wish I'd never seen this money. Barking a new school teacher, we figured we'd come over and take a look. Uh, I thought maybe you were thinking about going to school. <laughs> <laughs> you know we don't hold with no book learning. We're gonna be hog farmers, just like Pa. Uh. Class is dismissed. It is such a lovely day for horseback riding, and you are so thoughtful to suggest it. It's my pleasure, Miss Pettigrew. Abby. Class is dismissed. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Oh, he's so beautiful. Hey, we shouldn't talk like that in front of him. He's liable to get a swell head. Joe, do you think I could ride him? Oh, sure, why not? He's real gentle with ladies. Why are you? What's your fault? Mm. What's the matter? Ow. Ooh, it's Easy. my ankle. Not a swell. I think it's broke. No, no, no. We'll hear no more of that. Mr. Cartwright, I just can't stay here as a long-term house guest. Now, you can't stay at your own place with a broken ankle, can you? No. And you're the best thing that's happened around here in a long time, Peach. <laughs> you might even get to like us. Yes. Thank you, Candy. Well? Uh, no luck. I thought I could get Mrs. Ferguson. She was a pretty good substitute teacher, but she can't quit her job at the millinery store. Uh, but it'll be easy enough to find some. Ain't no big deal teaching school. I got an idea, Joe. Yeah, what's that? Who well, says it's no big deal? Why don't you do it? Why don't I do what? We'll teach school for a couple of weeks. Oh, come on. I'm... What, are you, what are you looking at me like that for? I was just thinking. Miss Pettigrew, how do you think Joseph would make out as a teacher? Well, he says it would be easy enough. I think he'd make a fine teacher. Well, I think he'd make a great teacher. You know, as a matter of fact, I would. I'd make, uh, I'd make a great teacher. I, I just have a lot of work to do here. That's all. That's no problem. I'll do the work for you. I'll do my work myself. Thanks. Joseph, every man, married or single, owes something to the children of his community. Now, what have you done 
for the children of your community. Well, I, nothing. I, I, absolutely nothing, Joseph. Now, don't you think it's about time you assumed some responsibility? Well, I'm willing to do my share, but, I, but I'm not going to teach school. <laughs> Now look, I'm not kidding you. I am not going to teach school N.O. Oh, no, that's it. I don't, I don't want to do it. Our new teacher, Billy. You look kind of natural, don't you? Mm -hmm. What are you two wondering? Well, uh, me and Billy, uh, we were thinking about how Miss Pettigrew always wanted us to come to school. We thought we'd come over and enroll. You two want to enroll? Sure. Why not? We as good as anybody, ain't we? Don't sit on the desk. You want to go to school? Take a seat. Uh, any place in particular? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, right up front where I can keep an eye on you. Right here. Anything you say, Joe. And from now on, the name is Mr. Cartwright. Oh, M Mr. Cartwright. Mm -hmm. you, you hear that, Mr. McNabb? I mean, from, from now on, Joe ain't Joe. Joe is Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Take off your hat. Yes, sir, Mr. Cartwright. Show some respect. Kathy? Kathy? What's the matter with her? She's scared, Mr. Cartwright. Scared of what? She never had a man teacher before. Kathy? Hey, Kathy, honey, you're not scared of me, are you? Oh, now, how can that be? Why, after all the times I've taken you on rides and you went over to your house to see your pa? You can't be afraid of me. Let me see a little bit of a smile. Okay, that's better. Hey, all you... All you kids. No, I accidentally made Miss Pettigrew hurt her leg, so I'm gonna have to be your teacher for a little while. I don't know too much about being a teacher, so it's gonna be up to you to help me. Now, will you help me? Yes, yes sir. Okay, good. How about you showing me where you sit, huh? Where's your seat, Kathy? Over there. There you go, honey. Um, my desk's over there, Mr. Cartwright. Go sit down, Mary. All right, erase it, Willie. Why me, Joe? The name's Mr. Cartwright. I said erase it. If you say so, let's go erase it, Billy. Do it, Willie. Not you, Billy, you. You know, uh, you really shouldn't get all fretted up, Mr. Cartwright. My pa, he always says, uh, Man, get fretted up. He's just gonna wear himself out. That's right. Man getting fretted so early in the morning, Mr. Cartwright. Gonna be plumb took it out before the day's over. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think we had enough school for one day, don't you, Billy? Yeah. See you tomorrow, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> Thank you. 
And then Chicken Little said... Uh, uh, then Chicken Little said, the sky is falling. Yeah, yes, Kathy? That's not the way Miss Pettigrew said it. She did it with different animal sounds. Well, that, that, that was Miss Pettigrew. You don't expect me to do it that way, do you? Yeah. 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 Yes. Yes, you do. Well, all right, I'll, I'll try. And then Chicken Little said, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I must go and tell the king. <laughs> Children, I, I think I'll find another story to read, all right? I got a much better one for you. <laughs> Chicken Little? Chicken Little? This guy is falling. Oh, this guy is falling on my head. Oh, mercy. You stay right here. I'm gonna go tell the king. Hey, get back inside. Quick, quick. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. Where you boys been? I ain't seen you since sun up. We've been at school, Paul. You no, know, Joe Cartwright, he's up. Uh... Taking over from Miss Pettigrew now that she's uh, laid up, and we've just kind of been pestering him. This, uh, Miss Pettigrew, she ain't got you boys hankering to go to school, has she? Us, Pa? What do we do at school? Well, there's them that values it. It looks to me like we got everything right here we're ever gonna need. That's right, Pa. Well, get out and get your chores done. It's getting late. Right, Pa. Right. Hey, Joe. Joe, you hear the news? Huh? Chicken Little just came by. The uh, sky falls off till next Thursday. Hmm. <laughs> Abby. Yeah, you met my friend, Chicken Little? <laughs> what was that all about? Oh, nothing. He thinks he's funny. How did your first day go? Many problems? Well, the McNabb boy showed up, if you consider that a problem. Joe, that's wonderful. I have been trying to get them to enroll for the past year, but their... Well, their father's been dead set against it. Yeah, well, he's been doing you a favor. Why did they cause you a lot of trouble? No, not too much. I didn't stay in school long enough. Joe, they need an education. And if you could just give them the special attention they need. Now, I'm not going to bend over backwards for the McNabb boys. If they come back to school, they'll get the same treatment the other kids get. And if they start fooling around again, they'll get something the other kids don't get. You surprised me. Why? I just didn't think you would admit the McNabb boys could get the better of you, that's all. No, I didn't say they could. I just said they better not try. I think you have a lot to learn about being a teacher. Yeah, well, you got a lot to learn about the McNabb brothers. We'll bring you your reward. Try, try again. All that other folks can do, why with... Patience. Patience, should not you. Only keep this rule in view. Try, try again. It's very good, Mary. <laughs> that was very good, Mary. Sit down. Uh, I think we've all been working real hard. You young folks, why don't you take a little rest, and the older ones can work on their arithmetic. Work on your arithmetic. Right. chilly in here, so uh, could we put some more wood on the fire? Well, it's very nice, Willie. Thank you.
just wonder how funny you're going to look while you're splitting wood this afternoon. We're going to need a cord. lady you know a lot about playing cards well i find a small knowledge of the science of mathematical probabilities to be great help. hey joe a little late today huh yeah and to keep a couple of little boys after school they tired yeah joe i hope you're not too tired to read me a story before you go to sleep <laughs> Fine. I don't know, Pussycat's my favorite. Well, it figures. <laughs> Perhaps you're finding taking care of a bunch of kids, to use your words, is more difficult than you thought, Joe. Was it Willie and Billy that you kept in after school? Oh, yeah, it was, it was Willie and Billy. Because I'm not too worried. I figure in two or three days they'll stop coming to school. Well, that seems like a pity, Joe. Oh, well, that's your opinion. Oh, I agreed to teach these kids, but I didn't say anything about raising Willie and Billy McNabb. Well, you know, teaching is only uh, part of a teacher's task. Concern for the boys' future welfare is the rest of it. Oh. oh. For some reason, I thought that was their father's job. They need to look up to someone more than their father, Joe. You could be that someone. Oh, come on, will you, Abby? These kids don't give a darn about going to school. All they want to do is horse around. Well, maybe they're testing you. Maybe they want to make sure that you're worthy of their admiration. Uh, the admiration of Willie and Billy McNabb are the least of my worries. I just hope I can keep them from burning the school down. I'm going to check that stove, and if I find out somebody's been fooling around with it, that somebody's going to be in a lot of trouble. We better get out of here, Mr. Carr. It's bad in here. You'll get out of here when I tell you to. Now, go on and sit down. Sit down. What's 
something like that doing up a chimney, Mr. McNabb. All right. All right, you want to act like little boys, and that's just how I'm going to treat you. Now, which one of you wants to go first? Now, hold on, Joe. There ain't nothing to get in a sweat over. Just a little low smoke. I said, which one of you wants to go first? Now, Billy didn't have anything to do with that chimney. Why don't you just let him get on out of here? All right, Billy, get on home. I've done my share. I want to stay. Billy, you get. Now, look, Joe. You've been having yourself a time just playing school teacher. That's fine. I've been going right along with you. But a tannin? No. I'll fight you. I'll fight you like a man and no hard feelings. Nobody gonna pants with me but my pa. All right, that's enough, Willie. I told you that's enough. I hit him, he didn't give me any choice. I'm just sorry I let him get to me. Well, is he all right? Oh, yeah, he's fine. I didn't hit him hard. His pride's hurt worse than anything. I don't think for sure he won't be back to school. I suppose that's best for both of us. Joe, that is where you're wrong. Look, you've accomplished something that I could never do. I'd like to know what that is. You got them to go to school. Now, regardless of their motives, it's a start. Now, that is the important thing. Well, important or not, it's too late. It's over. Joe, it's not over. You must talk to those boys. Abby, look, if I couldn't get through to them before, I certainly am not going to be able to get through to them now. Joe, as a teacher... As a te You keep saying, as a teacher. I am not the teacher, Abby. You are. That's right. I am their teacher, and their future is my responsibility. Now it's your responsibility. Not anymore. Joe, for what it's worth, I think Abby's right. You know, I'd, I'd love to know why you two are getting so upset over the McNabs. Oh, and you're not. I did the best I could. And that's the end of it. Yeah, that's the end of it. You know, I seem to recall you being sent home from school on several occasions. I don't remember the teacher quitting on you. Well, that's right, and you didn't quit on me either. You set me straight, you sent me back to school. Now, why can't their father do the same thing? I don't know. Why don't you ask him? Staying mighty close to home today, ain't you? Saturday, and we just ain't got nothing to do. Wouldn't have nothing to do with them bruises you keep trying to hide, would it? Oh, I seen them last night when you come sneaking in. Oh, 
Hard Rock. Hi, Mr. McNabb. Haven't seen you in a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Good to see you. Long set of spell. Thank you. Billy, Willie, how you doing? I was wondering why you haven't come by for a visit. Yeah. Seems the older I get, the closer I stay to home. Um, you ain't here because of something my boys have done, are you? Well, why? Did they say they'd done something? Well, they said they'd been funning you some, and uh, last night Willie come home looking like you'd been in a fracas. Well, they, they have been funning me a little bit, but I don't know anything about a fracas. You know anything about a fracas, Willie? Huh? I say you know anything about a fracas. No, I guess not. You boys go find yourself some chores. Me and Joe got some talking to do. Well, then. Tell me what's on your mind, Joe. Well, first I was wondering when you're going to butcher. We'd kind of like to have some of those hams of yours hanging in the smokehouse. Ain't going to be long now. Cold weather's coming. Me and the boys need some things. Yeah, boys need things. They've been complaining? No, no, nothing like that. Well, they better not complain. They got just about everything a hog farmer needs to have. What about an education? I thought that's why he is here. All right, that's why I'm here. I was hoping you'd tell him to go back to school. No, sir. I just don't see it that way. How do you see it? Well, it's a bunch of foolishness for a hog farmer. The boys are going to take over when I leave off. They got the house, the land, the stock. You, you keep saying hog farmer. I, I just don't see where it makes any difference what a man does for a living. He still needs an education. Yo, I don't want you putting any highfalutin ideas in them boys' heads. I came here hoping you'd put some highfalutin ideas in their heads. I can't read or write, and I get along good. So will they. I guess that's it, then. Sure to let us know when you got those hands ready. I'll sure do it. So long, boys. Joe have to say. Said he wanted to buy hounds. Mostly he just tried to get me to send you boys back to school. Didn't say anything about me. Was there some reason he should have said something about you? I guess not. Go on, tell him. Me and Joe, we locked horns yesterday. And, uh, well, he whooped me pretty good. I figured as much. So I, I couldn't go back there now anyhow. Why not? Because I got my pride. Well, that kind of pride you don't need. I suspect you was in the wrong. If you got to eat crow, eat crow. But you don't have to go back to school. I just can't see no sense in taking time off from your chores to learn something you don't need to know. Pa? You, you're dead set against us going to school, huh? I am, but I want to know how you feel about it. You want to go to school? No. No, I, I don't want to go. You want to go to school? No, I, I, I don't want to go either. They settle then. I don't hear no more about it. Willie? Yeah? How you figured Joe never told Paul about that ruckus you had? How do I know? Seems like that'd be the first thing a teacher would do. Why don't you just hush up? He ain't hard like any man I ever knew before.
a fine job. Well, I can't say doing it was easy. Pa says if a man's got to eat crow, he should go ahead and eat it. That the only reason you clean the place up? Look, you didn't tell Pa we had a fight. So I figure I owe you one. Kind of hoped you did it because you want to come back to school. We don't need any schooling, do we, Billy? Willie, I... I've been thinking. You know what Ma used to say. Hey, you just remember what Pa said. Yeah. You don't need no schooling to be a hog farmer. I don't like to go against your Pa, but I think he's wrong. I think you need schooling. I think a hog farmer can be a better hog farmer if he's got an education. Look, Joe, Mr. Cartwright, just done made up our minds. We got a lot of chores to do. Now, come on home. Now, come on. Mr. Cartwright, this here of Ma's Bible. Before she died, she wrote something inside. I sure would appreciate it if you could read it to me. Willie? I guess it don't hurt none. My dear sons, I have so little to leave you, I must count each thing I have with care. I leave you with my love, with the hope it will warm and guide you through all the years to come. I leave you the brave plans I had for you, knowing that somehow you'll make them real. And I leave you this book, the word of God to light your way. Live by it. Live by it, and remember my love is with you always. Thank you, Mr. Carrick. I guess it's about time to start school, huh? Remember that. Why? Why? Uh, now. Um, N O W now. C. <laughs> All right, that's enough. C's backwards. Let's turn it around. Is. The cat on the the mat. Mat. 
Willie. <laughs> Very good. Sit down. <laughs> Not too bad, huh? That's yeah, good. That's good. Billy, you're next. Go on. Go on. Eight, nine, ten, eleven. Six and five is eleven. Billy. What? What's that word? What? What's that word? Now I lost count. Four and two is six. W Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven. I thought so. He's just studying a little bit, Pa. I can read. So. I thought we agreed hog farmers didn't need no book learning. Joe Cartwright read us what Ma wrote in our Bible. And we thought she'd like it if we could get some learning. I, I could read it to you if you'd like, Pa. I memorized it by heart. Pa? Pa, Joe says a man is, is only half a man without any learning. I'm so glad to be back. And we're all glad you're back. We've got a surprise for you, a little program plan. Everybody sit down. All right, Tommy, you can start. The Gettysburg Address by President Abraham Lincoln. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth to this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot concentrate. Consecrate. Consecrate. We cannot hallow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here, have consecrated it far beyond our poor power to add or detract. The world will... Well, good to see you. Come on in, sit down. I come from my boys. Well, I think you boys would like to stay in school. You two get on home, there's chores to do. No, Will. No, I'm gonna fight you on this. These boys need an education. Fight me, huh? Now, there's something I've been waiting to hear. 
Come on outside. No, wait a minute, Will. That's not what I meant when I said fight you. You told my boys that a man with no learning was only half a man. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. I'll be waiting for you outside. <laughs> Children, this uh, will give me an opportunity to find out just how much you've learned since I've been away. Stay out of the way, boys. I'll show him who's half a man. Your man, Pa. You proved your point. So is Joe. If you're gonna do any more fighting, you're gonna have to fight me and Billy. You boys could fight me? Yeah. Willie, I don't want you fighting your Pa. If schooling for me and Billy is worth Joe fighting for, I guess it's worth me and Billy fighting for, too. Again, you or again, anybody. It's over. My Paul and Joe, Mr. Cartwright, are fine. Oh. Would it be okay if I went on with the reading? Please do, Willie. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that
that cause for which they gave their last full measure of devotion. We here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth.